Oh, I think it was in excess of that. I thought he said, I, I thought he said up to 10 hours of time. <coughs> My recollection may not be perfect. I thought you said it was somewhere in the neighborhood of five to eight hours. I, I could be wrong on that, but I mean, 150 bucks an hour, I think, is his hourly rate. That would be 750 to 1200 dollars. Uh, the issue, and I, I don't want to belabor this. I've expressed my point of view on this before. Um, the problem that I have uh, with it is well, fundamentally, I don't think the town should be in receipt of a bill of this magnitude for this manner. Um, I gotta go to that issue before I can even get to the one about how much of it is appropriately passed along to the, uh, the petitioner, the applicant, or Mr. Mr. Butler. Um, I supported, and I think Mr. Hahn or somebody pointed out that in fact, uh, when you were before us back in May or thereabouts, I think it was maybe wrong on that, um, I supported having Attorney De La Mora review this matter, because I thought that was a prudent thing to do. I will tell you my expectation at that point in time is that we would get a quality opinion from him, and my expectation is that maybe at most this would be two hours worth of work. Um, I don't know what Attorney De La Mora thought he was getting into, but I think he would certainly have responsibility to the town if this was going to be a two-day research project uh, to let us know that I, I cannot believe that he needed to spend that amount of time researching this matter. If he wasn't at all familiar with that territory, then he should have simply demurred and suggested that somebody else would be better for the task, and I could deal with that. Um, I don't see any way that the De La, Mora, De La Mora Law Firm is entitled to $300 at most for this matter. So that's the issue of the problem that I've got. The town should have never been in receipt of this bill in the first place. For clarification, Mr. Fisher, you are correct. It was between five to eight hours, which would be $750 to $1,200. How do you want to move forward? I, this was strictly an agenda item to have this conversation with Mr. Butler. I, I, I'd make a motion to settle this bill for a thousand bucks and, and resolve it and absorb the twelve hundred and thirty-five dollars that's left. So the town would eat the balance of the money. And find a way to resolve the issue moving forward on it. And you know, if, if you all want to put on the agenda, you know, tee up deal more and, and address them in that way about that, that's your prerogative. Mine was to try and find a way to resolve this item between the estate of June Kemper and Mr. Butler and the town of Waukesha. And, Originally, I would like to settle that somewhere closer to a 50-50 split, um, saying that there were things said here that caused certain reactions. Those reactions and that time spent may have been an overreaction. And, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to give you a tip of the head and say if we can settle this thing for a thousand bucks and be done with it, that would be my and then you can choose if somebody will second that. And if it passes, you can choose whether or not to accept that offer on, from the board as settlement, or we would end up moving forward and have to appear in front of the judge, and we'd have to decide who's going to go do that. But that's not on the agenda for us to appoint somebody today. It's simply offering Mr. Butler a resolution or, or trying to reach one with him is 
what the item was limited to. My feelings on this are well known. I am again, I have no appetite whatsoever to eat not 10 cents of this bill as I feel that it was outrageous uh, from the get go, regardless of whether or not Mr. Butler would agree to it. I have no inclination to support um, spending that money. The only thing is, is we gave Hector De La Mora the right to do it without putting a limit on it. So I don't know how we can, after the fact, put a limit on what he did for the town. As an attorney, he had a duty to tell you you're barking up a tree. And he didn't. That's one of his professional failures here. I was a corporation counsel for eight years, and I can't tell you how many times I told my board what they want to do is not in conformance with the law. They didn't like it, but that's too bad. The law is the law. Your attorney failed in his duty to tell you you're barking up a tree. He had already been given the statutes, which he should have read. He had already had the ordinances identified to him, which he chose to ignore. He did this to run up a bill. It's unethical and unprofessional, and he will answer to the state, to the Supreme Court of this state for those failures based on my petition. Okay. I, I don't know Hector very well. I'm new to this board. But he does not seem like he's a person to me that would just run up a bill to anybody just to get more money. I have a difference of opinion on that, sir. You're right. We do. So. Anybody else? We'll call one, please. Oh, yeah. okay. <coughs> Let's read yes, the motion again, please. Supervisor Vansky moved to have Mr. Butler pay $1,000 of the bill and the town to be responsible of the difference. A friendly amendment, please. I think we should um, move to offer Mr. Butler to settle for $1,000. That was okay. a Uh, Supervisor Vance can move to offer Mr. Butler uh, to pay $1,000 of the invoice in the town to be responsible of the difference. Chairman Merrick? No. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Wolf? Yes. Supervisor Vansky? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? No. <clears throat> Motion approved. And we'll move on. 